this will be like a, a lead generation client acquisition masterclass. And I want to talk about the, the common mistakes that we're seeing when, when, when real estate agents are approaching their business, because I think the number one, um, asked question real estate agents have is, is how to get leads, how to get clients. And so if you were to type that into like chat G P T jet, is it, is that what it is? Yeah. The P? Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. And you say, Hey, what is the most commonly asked question that real estate agents have? The number one by far is how to get clients, how to get leads. So first off, I want to tee this up by talking about we, we call them pillars. And the reason why we call them pillars is, is I want the audience to think about um, the easiest way is a stool or, or a chair, a chair, a chair is probably better. Most real estate agents that we come in contact with before we start working with them and before we're in a coaching relationship, this is what I see. I, I, if you guys see it differently, let me know. What I see is most of these real estate agents have like, a one, maybe a two legged chair that's mm -hmm. constantly falling over. And what, what we propose and what we, um, coach to is having a four leg, uh, a chair with four legs or four pillars. So the foundation of the chair doesn't keep falling over. And those are the four pillars of lead generation that I want everybody from this episode, like we're not holding anything back. We're going to get into the details so that you understand holistically from a 30,000 foot view, what those pillars look like so that you can have a more well-rounded business. And so let's get into the four and then we'll, we'll talk about them a little bit deeper. So pillar number one, and, and we'll come back and break these out, uh, uh, break it down is some type of outbound approach. And so this means that the, the real estate agent is in control of the, the, the leads that they're generating. We'll talk about some, some tactical things in just a second. But right now we're talking about the pillar of business. So we've got outbound is lead pillar number one. Lead pillar number two is some type of inbound approach where you have prospects reaching out to you. Lead pillar number three is referral partners. So having industries that are aligned with the real estate industry, referring you to their clients that they are working with. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then lead pillar number four is a real estate agent's sphere of influence, past client database marketing system. Now, before we get into the weeds of each one of those uh, uh, pillars, Again, I see when I, when I first talk to an agent, most of them have one of those going, yep. that's it. They have one and, and they put themselves in a very vulnerable situation as a business owner, because, because of their, they're, they're just a one trick pony. Like they live and die on that one strategy. So like as an example, a lot of agents will live and die by FISBOs and expires. It's just an outbound approach. Well, there aren't any FISBOs and there aren't any expires. They're, they're, they're toast. They're toast. They're toast. Yeah. It's like, well, what do I do now? I mean, that's a question we get so often in our coaching calls. Well, what do I do? It's like, well, you don't have all four business pillars. So is that what you guys are seeing? Let's stay with that. Like how often do you see real estate agents having all four versus one or two? Not very often, it, and Ben, I'm sure it could be similar for you. But I, they, to your point, they either have got one going on, or they are trying all four before one's even established. So I'm sure we'll talk about like order of operations and how to do this. But they're trying too many of them at the same time without getting anything established. Is the other thing I see. Yeah, Ben, what are we gonna add to that? Uh, I, I, I don't want to. Maybe it's a little too early to just throw a rant in, but I think. It's so many times people like live and die. You were talking about outbound. I think the industry has been trained to live and die by your sphere of influence. Yeah. And, you know, unleash me when you're ready for my uh, sphere of influence rant. I'm ready to go on it. So, but yeah, well, that, that's well, my we, initial thought. Yeah, 100%. And I was, yeah, I was just giving an example. Agents, regardless of the strategy, most of the time they are just living on one and you're right. 
all the studies and all the research, like most of the time, you nailed it. A real estate agent gets into this business and they think they're just going to survive off of that sphere of influence. And that's the only thing they got going on. So if, if frankly, grandma's not selling their house this year, they're in trouble. So yeah. go ahead, rant. Tell me what your thoughts are on sphere of influence. Yeah, and well, I, I think, frankly, a lot of brokers rely and live and die by the sphere of influence. Mm. Um, Work your sphere my, of influence, that whole messaging, right? Yeah, it's like, this is the way, right? This is yeah. it. There, there is no other spokes. Um, those come with with time and nobody does that. Those things are outdated. But here, here's my rant. We talk a lot about outbound. And the reason we do, it's not because it's better than your sphere of influence. Your sphere of influence referrals are ex the best. Like referrals yeah. are so powerful. You can walk in there. You don't have to have a presentation. You, you can basically just, it, it's already sold, right? The problem is um, we're out of control, right? We don't, if we work with somebody, we don't know if Colton has 5,000 friends and family and all that, and Brandon has 10 and he's in a brand new city, right? We don't know your life stage, your like where people are at in transition, all of those things. So sure, the strategy might work that people are sharing with you, but everybody is different where outbound, you have so much control over the, the data that you have available of people to run a strategy on. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, is um, preconceived notion of who you are. Let's say you were in high school. Let's say you were a, a doctor. Let's say you were um, a postman. All of those people know you as Brandon, the race car driver, and now all of a sudden, like you might have a bulletproof strategy, you might be extremely confident, competent in real estate, but they still kind of know you as the race car driver. And um, now you've got to like change their whole view. They know you, they like you, they trust you, but you got to change everything. Um, and a lot of times they want to see what sticks. The yeah. beauty about outbound that I love so much and other strategies with strangers is we get, they just know what you present to them. They don't know you as anything else except what you present. And instead of testing and trying things and, and trying to convince family and friends, we can go out, build outbound. And then all of a sudden our friends and family are chasing us versus us chasing them forever. Yeah. No, well, well said. That's my two and cents. Yeah, I mean, you said a lot there. And so I want to just, I want to um, point out a few things that you said that, that are really important is that I think, I think where people get in trouble when they think about lead generation is like with this binary thinking that this is the right way and this is the wrong way. This right. is the good side, that is the evil side, you know, and, and they're playing to like these worldviews on like their emotions on what they believe to be right and wrong, but it's not like that. It's very gray. That's why we have four pillars of business. It isn't that sphere of influence, like to your point, some, some agents sphere respond very well to them being in the business and some don't. Everybody should have a plan to work their sphere of influence, yes. period. You know, And so over time, different things will happen. So um, anything you wanna add, Colin, before we dive into each pillar? Just touching on the, the point with the sphere is like, especially when you're getting started, it's how you make your money. So if you had two scenarios where either way you're going to make 200 grand that year, how do you want to make it? Do you want it to be inconsistent, not knowing if the deal is going to come, if you're going to get that referral? Like I just talked to an agent, came out of the coaching program yesterday. He He's doing super well. Like he's, he's going to make 200 grand this year. He made 150 last year with his sphere, but he's just like, I don't know, man. He's un unsettled. He's uneasy because he's it's not controllable like that. It's all luck. Business. Yeah, it's, all luck. it's exactly. He's like, can I repeat I this? He doesn't know if he can repeat it next year. That's it's uncertain yeah. what it is. Well, and the thing is, I, I know we're talking a lot about sphere and, and we'll come back to it, but it's luck. I mean, there's a lot of agents that will hit it big their first couple of years with their sphere because their sphere responds really well. And I remember like vividly talking to the one of the one of the agents that are that were that was on my team and he was like yeah it was just luck i can't 
I, it was nothing that I did specifically that generated all this business for my friends and my family and their friends and their family. And to your point, Colton, can I, can I reproduce that again? No, that's why I need to learn outbound. So there's a time and place for them all. And so, you know, mm-hmm. with sphere specifically, when I'm talking about sphere of influence in the context of this conversation, I'm talking about like proactively communicating to that, that, that group of people so that you can generate a consistent stream of business from that pillar. So let's go back to pillar number one, and then we'll work our way through it. So pillar number one, let's talk about outbound. So this isn't necessarily a, a, a conversation about like the pros and cons of each of them, a, as much as it is to bring awareness around what we're talking about, right? And so we can let people, we'll maybe we'll have another episode, you guys, like around the pros and cons of each and, and all of that. This is more so like raising someone's level of awareness because every time we talk about client acquisition or lead generation, they're always like, well, what is, what do you mean outbound? What do you mean uh, referral partners? Mm. That's what I want today to be about, right? So when we talk about outbound, we're, we're talking about what you both already said, which is putting you in control. Like that's the upside to outbound, but it is the hardest way too, right? So it has the greatest, uh, puts you in a lot of control but it is the hardest. And I want to stay away from that, like I just said. But what, what I'm talking about specifically is, is making outbound prospecting phone calls. I'm talking about door knocking. I'm talking about um, internet leads. I'm talking about paid ads. I'm talking about things where you have to pick up the phone or get off your rear end and go generate or better yet, initiate the conversation. That's what I mean by outbound, where you simply make a decision every day how many people you want to talk to on a daily basis. And one of you said it too, I do believe from a from a priority standpoint, this is probably where people need to start. And it's where people avoid the most. So when we talk about outbound, we're talking about an approach where you're initiating the conversation. And yes, this brings, this is like the most uncomfortable part for people getting into the business. This is the direct outbound sales approach that most people just don't want anything to do with. Yeah. So my, something I heard recently, that just kind of an easy way to explain the difference between outbound and inbound is outbound is one-to-one it's you're going to somebody privately having a a personal conversation and in inbound is one to many, right? Which we'll get Mm -hmm. into in a minute. But it, it, it's more public is how you attract them versus private, like one-to-one. Great point. Yeah. Yes. And the whole thing I, I thought about, you know, to simplify inbound versus outbound is who is the person initiating the conversation? Yes. That's the way I think about it. It's even more simple, right? It's like, if yeah. you're initiating, then it's an outbound approach. Yeah. And so we just gave some, some uh, examples of that. Let's talk about inbound. So inbound means that the consumer is initiating conversations with you in response to some type of stimulus. We'll call it content. So let me give you an example. So YouTube is a great way to generate inbound leads, inbound clients. It's a phenomenal way. And we teach a lot of our, we've done our our YouTube workshops before. We'll probably do many, many more of those throughout the year. YouTube's one way. Blogging is another way that I I rarely see real estate agents do this. It's a phenomenal strategy because all the agents who say, yeah, I know about YouTube. I know I should be making it. I should know I should be doing content. I'm just not comfortable making videos and putting myself out there like that. Cool. Blogging's for you. You can write and get the same amount of inbound lead traffic through a blog as you can YouTube. It's just people don't know how to do it. You could do the same thing with a newsletter. There's a whole email newsletter strategy that this is the one I never see realtors. I I see a lot of people doing YouTube. I see a lot of people, uh, uh, some people doing blogging. I never see anybody have a email newsletter strategy that generates inbound traffic, inbound leads. Never see that. I never see agents have a webinar strategy ever. And Mm. so that's another way to generate inbound clients, inbound leads is to have a, a webinar strategy that you could put out there, you can make it one time and have it run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can have a webinar driving traffic inbound seminars, live seminars, doing these at 
you know, uh, first time home buyer seminars, first time home seller seminars. You could be doing seminars with financial planners and and um, long term care insurance agents at you know assisted living facilities. We used, we do them all the time. You could do these with attorneys. You could do this with divorce attorneys. You could do this with estate planning attorneys. No one ever does it. Direct mail is another way to generate inbound traffic. So when we talk about inbound, this means to your point, it's you're selling one to many. So you're, gen- you're, you're communicating to a broad audience and that mm-hmm. audience who resonates with the message is reaching out to you to do business with you. Anything you guys want to add to inbound? One thought that I had yeah. is the cool thing about a- any one of those strategies you talked about is it's duplicatable. So it's your, it's an asset that is duplicatable. Meaning let's say you do want to do the YouTube kind of strategy. Well, you can duplicate that, take the script, the transcript and make it into a blog, right? Let's say you want to write, there's tools and there's Great AI point. where you can turn it into a YouTube video. If you're going to do a first time home buyer seminar in person, record it and it's duplicatable, right? So like <laughs> these are all assets. We think about a house as an asset, right? You can't duplicate a home, right? But all of this stuff that we're doing are assets that we can duplicate and use in other channels and other areas. Great point. The repurposing of content. I mean, yeah, that is such a great point. Whatever you do here, you can repurpose it for all those other platforms. I just don't think agents think about like inbound the way in which we're, we're the context in which we're talking about, because everything is hard. You know what I mean? I think the problem is, you know, most agents are just looking for like that magic pill, like let me just do one thing one time and, and it's going to work. And there's just no such thing. Ben, did you want to add something? There, there's also what you outlined, there's paid and unpaid, right? Yeah. You can, you can, your asset can be the effort you put into it, or it can be a expensive billboard or radio, right? Yeah. Um, and both are hard, right? But um, they, they equal different results as well. So you don't have to think I got to be this big celebrity billboard guy. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, inside of each one of these, you have paid and unpaid. I wanted to, so yes, you're exactly right. You know, if you go back, you, you can have a, a, a totally, you can lead with revenue and lead with profit and have a free lead generation strategy under all four, or you can have yeah. a paid strategy under all four. You know, right. this comes down to the specific agent. This is why, you know, hopefully for, through this framework, you know, you've got four ways to get clients. We're talking about them right now. And inside each of those pillars, you can pay to acquire leads or you can get them for free depending on the agent's personality style. All right, so let's go on Just I wanna keep this under 30 minutes. Um, Lead pillar number three, referral partners. Another one where I think agents' awareness needs to be raised and we need to do a better job of talking about this more as as a team, as a company, because most agents are the... uh, they're on the wrong end of this. Mm. Most of the time, agents are the referral partner for other industries like loan officers, uh, title salespeople, home warranty people, home inspection people. But when you ask an agent, hey, what does your referral partner strategy look like? They think we're talking about the consumer referring them to more consumers. That's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about going to adjacent industries that are working with people that have a need to buy and sell a home and we're prospecting those business professionals to build a relationship with them to become an extension of their business. Well, Brandon, what are you talking about? Can you give us an example? Yes. Divorce attorneys, Mm -hmm. CPAs, estate planning attorneys, financial planners. These are all examples of people that are working with people that are buying and selling houses that need a realtor. Specifically, let's go a uh, probate attorney is another good one. Probate attorney, divorce attorney, probably the the uh, the most lucrative or the most potent uh, of referral partners that an agent can go after. Because if you look at every divorce, what's happening? Well, 85, 90% of the time, which this goes right into our mastermind next month, we're having a divorce real estate mastermind next month. But um, 80 to 90% of the time, the divorcing couple is selling the marital home. And not only that, typically both of them are also buying homes. And so you got three real estate transactions from one life occurrence. And if you think about the average divorce attorney, 
they have 10, 15, 20 cases going on at all times. If you take 20 times three, I don't know, you, maybe you guys would do the math. That's like 50, yeah. 60 transactions. And oh, by the way, in most divorce cases, the judge won't let the divorcing couple pick the realtor Correct. because they can't agree on anything. Why would they agree on the realtor that's going to list the house? And so therefore, the divorce attorney then can make that recommendation. And so it would make a lot of sense for a realtor to go have five or six divorce attorneys who has tons of listing opportunities, and now they have inbound referrals. So that's what we mean by having a referral partner team. Colton, I see you taking notes and probably going to drop some stuff. Go ahead. Yeah. So Ben, you want to go first before I drop some heat here? I don't want you to lose your train of thought. No, I'm just going to clarify. Like so often we go from bit we're in business straight to the customer. And what we're That's talking right. about here is business to business. That's, That's right. all. Yeah. So, Wait all right. On a so Brandon, I don't think I, we've ever talked about this strategy. Uh, yeah, I know you and I have talked about it, but I don't think publicly. Okay. Um, and this is the benefit of us being in the world that we're in learning from the people that we learn from, you know, internet marketers and the online space, they're always way ahead of the, the local business types in terms of how they market and get clients. They're always a few years ahead for whatever reason, because it moves so much faster. So a couple of things, what do agents struggle with a lot of the times when they're thinking of working with a divorce attorney or working with a, a financial planner? The question that we get all the time is like, well, why would they work with me, right? Like Always. what's going to be my value to them? And we can have a whole nother episode on all the different types of value propositions. But essentially what you want to do is think of the problems that those people have and how can you position yourself to solve those and make yourself the obvious choice for them to refer people to. So here's another one. What do What is a problem that most of these service providers have, right? Most agents have it as well. I'm just going to shortcut and, and give the answer. It's coming up with content. It's making their own content for their database. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they, what do I post? I, I don't want to do all this and it takes too much time. All right, what's the solution for them? They could go hire a social media manager. They could go pay somebody a thousand bucks a month, 2000 bucks a month to manage their content. Or you can come in, partner with them, leverage their database and their list that they already have and say, hey, why don't I make some content for you and, and market your services and, 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 and it's called a list swap in the internet marketing space. Like you're, you're an affiliate. And so you're marketing to their mm -hmm. list, but you're solving a problem for them, making content for them and you're in front of their audience. So you can, you know, write an email, write a newsletter that they can send out to their list of a thousand people. And by the way, what did we just talk about? That's duplicatable. So you do the work once you have 10 partners. Now you're in front of 10,000 people a week with your newsletter or the video you made or the blog post, whatever, by doing the work once and you're, you're in front of all of their database. Love it. It's so good. And we talked about, so like even getting more practical Colton, yes. to use that strategy. That's exactly what we've done. So we go to a, a divorce attorney who doesn't know anything about content creation or, or any, any marketing. They're just, they don't have the marketing brain most of the time. And you shoot a webinar, right? right? Digitally over Zoom. And then we repurpose that. And then we do exactly what Colin just said. We market that webinar recording to their database, to our database. And you're repurposing that. You could do that with your CPA, your financial planner. And the webinar is based on their zone of genius. Yep. So if Ben is a divorce attorney, I'll shoot the the interview. I'll tee him up to make him look like an absolute exactly. rock star about yeah. his business. And then yeah. I can help to promote and get that distribution channels uh, uh, down because he doesn't, he doesn't know how, right? And so that's a simple value add to your referral partners. Yeah, and Ben, go that's, ahead. That's the whole key with this whole play. It's, it's you gotta be thinking long, long term. It's yeah. value, 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 value. Like, um, uh, Gary V said, like in his book, it's jab, 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 right hook. Like you don't ask for anything. You just add value over and over and over again to build credibility one with the referral partner and then potentially their audience. Yeah. And I would say just, it's like, it's more like jab, 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 jab and, until yeah. the referral until partner. Just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's the new way. Yeah, It's like you provide so much value getting them to your events, you're doing webinars, you're doing seminars, you're marketing to their database, you help growing their business. And what happens is 
they have clients that need realtors who are like, oh, you got to talk to my guy. That's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we mean by referral partners. All right, let's go to now number four, which is that past client center of influence database. This is the one how we started off this conversation. This is how most real estate agents believe they're going to do business when they get into the business. And, and again, some people's sphere responds differently than others. What I rarely see is somebody having an actual system of communication with these people, like having it organized in a system and a process um, to actually proactively generate these conversations. And in other words, it's the same approach we're talking about with referral partners. It's to serve these people. It's not about how do I just keep asking them for business? Nobody wants to do that. And, and nobody yeah. does do that. So they end up just waiting for Aunt Sue to call them. So yeah. what we're talking about is proactively communicating to them. So let me give some examples. Certainly your weekly email newsletter is where it all starts. It's free. It just requires your ass to do the work. And I know most realtors don't want to do that. But that's the foundation of this system is the weekly email newsletter. Certainly, you, you got to start to think about, okay, what am I going to start mailing them, physically mailing them? Our recommendation for clients that we coach is you mail them once a month with high value content, not begging and pleading, uh, begging for business. I no, no, no. It's, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's serving them. Certainly having some events, certainly recognizing people on their birthdays. You know, these are just some ideas. Those, if, if people just did those four things, they send a, uh, an email once a week. They sent a piece of direct mail once a month. They had some type of in-person live event every 90 days, right? Yes. yes. You know, if they were just to do those things and they recognize them on their birthday, they sent them a birthday card, they sent them a brownie, they sent them a dollar scratch off lottery ticket. If they just did those four things, let alone all the other things that we, we have agents do. Yeah. You're going to win the top of mind awareness. And that's what we're looking to do so that when they think of real estate, or the conversation of real estate comes up at work, they're like, oh, you got to call my guy. You got to call my girl. She's amazing. She'll take great care of you. That's the, that's the game. Go ahead, Colton. And that's all it is. Like, I think we overwhelm ourselves with the content we have to make. Like, we have to come up with some mind-blowing new thing yeah. that's gonna, like, it's, sh no, there's nothing you can say that 50 other agents can't say as well. It's not about what you say. It's just how you instill that trust and that credibility in them. And just the way, the way to do that is just to consistently be on the top of their mind, you know? It's about just saying it. Saying Forget it. about yeah. what, what should you say and, oh, I don't know about this. Just say it. Just start and you'll get better. It's about consistent communication. That's what it's about. When it comes to marketing to this group of people, it's about serving, right? It's about serving them. It's not about begging for business, but it's about staying top of mind awareness, you know? And the easiest place to start is just Google real estate news in your local market. And trust me, all the news outlets will give you plenty to talk about, you know? And so if you just started with that, you'll never run out of content ideas of stuff that people care about. Why do we know that? Because your local news stations are spending millions of dollars to get these messages to your audience. You might as well just piggyback off of that content. That's the easiest way to do it. Ben? Um, yeah, I don't know how this is going to land, but I mean, I just think of like real estate, it's not a multi-level marketing play, right? right? So it's like, let's, let's just, let's make real estate great again and, and just deliver in a way to, to people where we just add value to our friends and family and then just show them that we're an expert, not try and tell them that we are, right? right? Not just tell them why they should work with us, but just attract them over time, earn the business over time. Yeah. One, one other tactic thing to, to do that is, and I, I say it, it's like I get blue in the face saying it, no one ever does it, is just the weekly local housing market update video, Facebook yeah. Live once a week. There's nothing more that would position you as an expert than that, and no agents will do it. And all you have to, all the stats are there. All you have to do is hit record and say, hey, here's what's happening in Tampa. Here's what happened over the last 30 days in San Diego. Here's what's going on. And people, watch you through the lens and you'll start building that expert authority. Well, it's simple. And your own all. personal audience. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Ben. No, I was just saying, and you're going to attract your own audience, right? But That's through right. your personality, who you are, be you. Don't try and be anybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and just simplifying it all like that is your weekly email and then that's your that's YouTube right. video and then your database letter is just a summary of what you talked about every week like keep it simple that's exactly right and by diversifying through all four of these like we're talking about it just takes the pressure off of one individual one you don't have to hit a home run and just beat beat it to death you can diversify and take that pressure off I was going to say the same thing. That's how I was going to tee. The, that's how I was going to wrap this whole thing up. Like, you know, most people, because we talk so much about outbound, people have this perception of like, oh, I'm going to do 50, 80, 100 deals from this one lead source. That's not the case. It's 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 doing 20 deals from this pillar, 20 deals from this pillar, 20 deals from this pillar, 20. Deals. Now you got 80 deal business coming from four different channels, right? Now you have a well diversified business model that no matter what the market does, you're winning. You're winning. Doesn't matter what mortgage rates do. It doesn't matter what the housing market does, because if you have all four working for you, your business will always thrive. So hopefully you guys got some good practical takeaways from today's episode and we'll see you guys in the next one.